Welcome to Space Verse, your portal to cosmic adventures. Less than a million years ago, in a dark corner of the Orion constellation, a star nursery was at work, the Flame Nebula, just 1,400 light years away from Earth. Amidst the glowing gas and dense clouds of dust, something unusual was forming, brown dwarfs. These are the so-called failed stars, objects too small to sustain hydrogen fusion like normal stars do. Over time, they cool and dim, making them some of the hardest objects in the universe to detect. Even though they're relatively close in cosmic terms, brown dwarfs are incredibly faint. Most telescopes simply can't pick them out from the background, especially in a region as cluttered and clouded as the Flame Nebula. But there's a catch, when these brown dwarfs are still young, they're warmer and brighter. And this is where the James Webb Space Telescope comes in. With its advanced infrared vision, Webb can peer through the dusty chaos and pick up the faint heat signatures of newborn brown dwarfs, some of them just a few times more massive than Jupiter. A team of astronomers used Webb's precision to hunt for the very lowest mass brown dwarfs in the Flame Nebula. What they found was astonishing, objects with as little as two to three times the mass of Jupiter. And Webb's sensitivity goes even further, down to about half of Jupiter's mass. The mission's goal? To explore the minimum mass limit for brown dwarf formation. Lead researcher Matthew D. Furio from the University of Texas at Austin said it plainly, we can probe the faintest and lowest mass objects with Webb. So how does this all come together? NASA created a stunning montage, blending Hubble's visible and near-infrared views with Webb's deeply penetrating infrared images. The result? A dramatic transformation. What looked like an opaque cloud in Hubble's view is unveiled in Webb's as a transparent structure lit up by young stars and faint brown dwarfs. In this visualization, blue light represents 1.05 microns, green is 1.3 microns, and red is 1.39 microns in Hubble's view. In Webb's images, it gets even more intricate, blues at 1.15 and 1.4 microns, green at 1.82, orange at 3.6, and deep red at 4.3 microns, each revealing different layers of this stellar nursery. But to understand why these brown dwarfs form, we have to go smaller. Massive clouds in space fragment into smaller and smaller pieces. The key to how small they get lies in the balance of pressure, gravity, and temperature. If the fragment's core heats up enough, it becomes a star. If not, it cools, shrinks, and stays a brown dwarf. As Professor Michael Meyer of the University of Michigan put it, the ability of clouds to fight gravity depends on their ability to cool down. If they cool too efficiently, they collapse. But if they become too opaque and trap their own heat, fragmentation stops. So what's the smallest a brown dwarf can be? Previous studies suggested that as mass drops, the number of objects increases, up to about 10 Jupiter masses. But below that? Numbers sharply decline. Objects with three Jupiter masses are far rarer than those with five. And those with five are rarer than those with 10. Thanks to Webb's capabilities, we now know the population drops off significantly below two or three Jupiter masses. That might be the true bottom limit, unless, of course, we're looking at rogue planets that were ejected from their solar systems. For the first time, we've actually reached that edge. These three faint, low-mass objects captured by Webb highlighted in the right-hand insets, exist at temperatures so low they require extreme sensitivity to even detect. By capturing them, Webb isn't just taking snapshots of distant space. It's redefining our understanding of how stars and their smaller cousins are born. When we look up into the night sky, we see stars shining bright. But hidden among them are mysterious objects that don't shine as brilliantly brown dwarfs. These cosmic enigmas are sometimes called failed stars because they never gained enough mass to ignite sustained hydrogen fusion at their cores. Yet they hold incredible scientific value. Brown dwarfs are unique. They share characteristics with both stars and planets, placing them in a category all their own. And this makes them powerful tools for understanding how stars form, how planetary systems evolve, and what lies between these two worlds. For decades, NASA's Hubble Space Telescope has been at the forefront of this exploration. 
While Hubble wasn't designed specifically to hunt for brown dwarfs, its precision imaging and infrared capabilities allowed astronomers to spot clues, subtle hints buried in the cosmic dust. In fact, Hubble has been quietly compiling decades' worth of data from nearby star-forming regions, including the vast Orion Molecular Cloud Complex. Among those regions lies the Flame Nebula, a dense, glowing cloud of gas and dust just 1,400 light-years from Earth. It's a nursery for baby stars, and nestled within it are some of the smallest, coldest brown dwarfs we've ever tried to find. Hubble couldn't quite detect the faintest of these objects on its own, but it helped chart the path. Its data pointed researchers to the right places, showing them where to look more closely. That's where the James Webb Space Telescope comes in. Armed with next-generation infrared instruments, Webb is able to peer through the dust that hides these faint objects. It sees what Hubble couldn't, brown dwarfs as small as just a few times the mass of Jupiter, and possibly even smaller. By building on the foundation laid by Hubble, Webb is now helping astronomers probe the very edges of what's possible in star and planet formation. This handoff from Hubble to Webb is more than just a technological leap. It's a continuation of a legacy. A journey that began decades ago, now reaching deeper into the cosmos than ever before. And thanks to both of these incredible observatories, we're one step closer to understanding not just how stars are born, but how the universe itself builds its most mysterious objects. Studying brown dwarfs is no easy task, especially from the ground. In regions like the Flame Nebula, even detecting brown dwarfs as massive as 10 times Jupiter's size can be incredibly difficult. The dense gas, the swirling dust, it's all a veil that ground-based telescopes simply can't pierce. But thanks to over 30 years of data collected by the Hubble Space Telescope, astronomers knew that this particular patch of sky was a gold mine, a stellar nursery rich with potential targets. As lead researcher Matthew D. Furio put it, we needed the James Webb Space Telescope to truly explore this scientific frontier. With Hubble, we knew what might be out there. But with Webb, now we can see it. Massimo Roberto of the Space Telescope Science Institute put it best, Webb is revealing a whole new world of opportunities, an entirely new window into the cosmos. Right now, the team is using Webb's spectroscopic instruments to continue scanning deep into the Flame Nebula. They're analyzing objects hidden within that dusty cocoon, some of them might be planets, others extremely low-mass brown dwarfs. And as astronomer Michael Meyer noted, the lines between the two can be blurry. Some things could be planets, others low-mass brown dwarfs. Over the next five years, our mission is to figure out which is which. And why? These findings have already been accepted for publication in the Astrophysical Journal Letters. And perhaps the most striking evidence of progress? A side-by-side -side comparison of Hubble and Webb's observations of the Flame Nebula. In Hubble's view, the low-mass objects are barely visible, completely cloaked by the nebula's thick dust and gas. But then Webb takes over. Its infrared vision cuts through the cloud and suddenly, three low-mass objects come into focus. Silent, faint, but unmistakably there. It's a powerful reminder of how far we've come. The James Webb Space Telescope is more than just a scientific tool. It's a time machine, a microscope for the stars, and a beacon for future discovery. Whether it's revealing the secrets of brown dwarfs, mapping the birth of stars, or exploring planets in distant solar systems, Webb is helping us push the boundaries of what's possible in space science. In partnership with the European Space Agency and the Canadian Space Agency, NASA's Webb mission is unlocking the mysteries of the universe. One observation at a time. If you enjoyed this journey into the depths of space, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for more cosmic explorations. Until next time, keep looking up.